What's up? Honor my 26 year. I'm here to give you my ROH Revolution USA review. This show took place in Dearborn, Michigan on May 6th. Uh, this was, I guess, the third to last show before uh, Best in the World, which is this Sunday, and a video on that is coming up. Uh, yeah, Revolution Canada was next night, and then Supercard of Honor was the last show uh, before it. So, yeah, this is the third to last show before Best in the World. Obviously, this is a storyline driven show uh, based off the fact that, you know, coming out of the Atlanta shows and you're trying to transition into Supercard of Honor, so I expected that, and then that's exactly what we got. Uh, and the ending wrestling was there for the most part of what I expected. Uh, it was still a very, very good show. I wouldn't call it great. Uh, in parts, it was hard to sit through, but let's just get into the review. Opener of the Honor Take Center Stage uh, Chapter 2 rematch, Homicide versus Tommaso Ciampa. Match in Atlanta was better, however, this was a little more storyline-driven. Uh, just a little bit more interference from Princess Mia and R.D. Evans and stuff like that, and that led to uh, led to an angle which will be played out at best in the world uh, with R.D. Evans suing Homicide and then them bringing in a bodyguard as the Sue, as in Rhino. But um, just still a very, uh, an okay match. Uh, Homicide did look good for the stuff he did do here. Uh, and they did play off the fact of that Julius Smokes in a promo came to him in New York and said left the gates of hell opening, uh, teasing the Rottweiler and Homicide has to come out. So I really did like that, uh, two and a quarter stars. Then we got to a match that I actually really enjoyed sitting through. Uh, Michael Elgin versus Andy Ridge. Michael Elgin did look very good here. I mean, when Michael Elgin goes in as the favorite in a match or as the more experienced competitor, more, more so, uh, he plays that role very well. And even though in most matches he's not that guy, in this role he did play it very well. Uh, and then Andy Ridge did a very good job as well. I, I'd like to see him on more shows and, th and get some victories, hopefully, instead of just losing. Because I haven't seen him get a win since, I think, the Charlotte or Richmond show, uh, uh, which was like the first show this year. So um, still a very, very uh, entertaining match to sit through. Michael Elgin looked damn impressive, uh, two and three-quarter stars. Then we got Steve Carino coming out. Uh, he went on like a almost two month sabbatical, and he addressed everything, and you know introduced the idea of a sponsor, which turned out to be I don't if you don't if you don't know who it is, you know I don't want to ruin it, but you probably should if you follow the company. Um, you know that whole promo, I, I, and I'm re after watching this promo, I really, really, really like this storyline because it, it it's different. You know I like things that are different and original, and this is something that is uh, definitely original and. You know, and uh, it eventually led to Mike Bennett coming out, which I'm I'm, I'm indifferent I'm about Mike Bennett right now. I mean, he obviously doesn't wrestle the Ring of Honor style, and but I like how he plays off of that. And you know, obviously his in ring is it's still coming together, you know. But we'll see how he does against Jay Lethal on Sunday, and uh, so I'm I'm gonna wait out until then. Even though this his match with Grizzly Redwood was not good at all, uh, it was hard to sit through. Even though it didn't even last that long, it's one of those matches that went about. I guess maybe six or seven minutes and felt like it was about 20. So I didn't like it at all. Star and, a, star and three quarter. Just, uh, it, it, Mike Bennett looks good doing a spine buster, but that, that that was about it from this match. Then we got to the part of the car where everything from here down was good. Uh, first blood match, J. Mark Briscoe versus the All Night Express. Very good stuff here. Um, very interesting ending, and I will say that because I don't want to ruin it if you haven't seen it, even though it was in the video wire. Um... Just, just, just some great stuff here. Um, it was still a very good match, uh, but interesting ending. And I liked, I liked the booking because of how interesting they made it and how they set up the Chicago match and how they're setting up the future of this feud. And that's why you know this match is completely fine with me. You know, Titus did a great job here. King looked great. Jay and Mark, you know what you get with them. You know. And by the way, in the ROH Q and A, I just got an answer from Jay Briscoe. I asked him which wrestlers inspire him, and I meant to put in the question. Uh, um, which, uh, the or the original style that you consider original, or because that, that's I expected his answer to be, but he answered me with "Doink the fucking clown," which I thought was really funny. Uh, but not that many of you care about that, but whatever. Um, uh, yeah, three and a half stars. Very good match. Uh, I really liked it. Probably the third best match of the night. Or yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put that ahead of the other tag team match. Uh, they got three and a half stars. Uh, then we got uh, Christopher Daniels and Cole Cabana. Another storyline. Uh, element of the House of Truth, which I really liked, along with Steve Carino, and there's another one coming up on the show even. So, you know, I, I really liked this stuff. Christopher Daniels did look very good here, um, and I noticed that he and the All Night Express, and possibly uh, even the World's Greatest Tag Team had different theme music on this show. So, hope maybe we'll see that in uh, NYC a little bit, but I really liked this match. Um, didn't go all that long, but it was good for what it was, and that's 
you know, what I like. You know, Cocobana does his European style, and, you know, I like that a lot. Daniels does is still a very good wrestler, and he showed it here based off of just some of the stuff he can do, you know. he is, I think he is more of a natural heel for whatever reason. Um, you know, he showed his prophecy side, which we haven't seen in such a long time, and I liked it a lot. It's original, you know. We have probably haven't seen him do that since 2004. Maybe even 2003, you know, he was on one show in 2004 for Ring of Honor, then left. Uh, but, you know, since 2003, we haven't seen that, and I really, really like that. He shows a lot of signs of that here. Uh, so, three stars, still a good match. Then we got to the uh, World's Greatest Tag Team, Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas versus Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. Cole and O'Reilly keep having great, good matches in Ring of Honor, you know. Uh, the They could be future breakout stars here, you know. I mean, definitely a tag team title reign before the end of next year is in, is in the works. But, you know, the, these two are just awesome uh, in the ring, you know. I love both their styles. They're different, and they complement each other. They're exactly what a young, young and up-and-coming tag team should be. Uh, they remind me a little bit of, actually, uh, the Briscoe Brothers. We watched some of their stuff from, like, 03. You know, you can see just the kids who are trying to get themselves over type thing. I, I really, really like that in them. You know, they could be... You know, whatever happens with the Briscoe Brothers, they could be the next big tag team in Ring of Honor, and I really, really like that. And then, the, and um, Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas, you know, they are, uh, and and their their styles really do contrast. Uh, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, because you know they do wrestle more than more of. I mean, I mean, they they fit with Ring of Honor perfectly, but they do wrestle more of a slower WWE type style in Ring of Honor, which is fine if you can back it up with charisma and then impact on the moves, which both of them do fine with. Um, so it was very contrast because Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly rest of the style of just like indie and you know impact and just trying to do all these impressive moves, uh, and and it worked you know I throw all these those things together and I, I, you got a pretty damn good match here you know um, give these guys more time and I think you know they could even do something even better than this you know I mean because their styles were so different it, took, it did take a little bit of an adjustment to get to that but once it got adjusted it was really really fun to watch uh, fourth best match of the night but you know it was still very very good three and a half stars. Then we got the third and final uh, House of Truth moment of the night, uh, or uh, storyline match. Um, no DQ, second best match of the night, El Generico versus Roderick Strong. Um, much better than their Atlanta match, better than their SoCal Showdown match. Uh, just, you know, th this, this was everything I liked about it. Uh, you know, just, it, it was different. And, and you, you know, you, ex you know what you expect with Roderick and Generico, you know, the two great performers. But there's also just a degree of, you know, unpredictability to their matches because, you know, both of them, if you put them, let's say, let's take Davey Richards, for example. Put them both in there with Davey Richards. I'd say that could be an amazing match. You know, look at the 8th anniversary show and then look at Honor Takes Center Stage, look at Final Battle, you know. And you have two separate matches, uh, or three separate matches, you know, with two different opponents and you have, you know, amazing matches. But I, and I know I'm using Davey Richards as the example, but, you know, you get my point. And you put these together, and I, I can't remember just an amazing match that these two have had, or, or, or a great match for that matter, you know. I thought the one at uh, Soko Shadow was very good, and I, I know they've had other matches in Ring of Honor history, but I just could not think of one. So this is their best match in Ring of Honor history these two have ever had. I don't think they've faced in PWG, or not recently. I, do, I can't remember it. So, you know, this, this was very uh, entertaining to see these two guys bust their asses and stuff, so I really liked it. Um... I actually really enjoyed this. You know, the, the storyline stuff bumped this up from a very good match to a great match, and that's really what I like. Just a great, great stuff here. Uh, four stars. Um, some might complain about too much interference, but I had no problem with it because, you know, you know, it's a storyline, and they're putting over this this faction is trying to, you know, take over Ring of Honor, and that's where Carino comes in and Cabana and Generico, and that, and that and now whoever the Carino's sponsor is, and, you know, I really like it. and Just because it's original, I, I bumped it up a little bit. Then we get to the match of the night, the main event, uh, Kings of Wrestling versus the American Wolves. Um, a lot of people s can see where this is going based off of the storyline, what's happening in New York, what happened in Atlanta. But, you know, this is, they still kept it fun and original. I almost gave this four and a quarter. But, you know, I still I still really, really like this. Not as good as their uh, tag title classic two match, but I still just thought this was very, very good. Actually, I thought this was uh, pretty damn great, actually. Um, you know, very... Uh, you know, it was a little predictable, but I don't I don't care because it was because they did enough of good in ring wrestling to make me forget that and that and I really 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 did like that. So I'm gonna give this four almost four and a quarter, but I'm gonna give it a strong four stars. Um, lots of great tag team spots here. Eddie looked really good. Um, Davey looked really good. Um, Chris and Claudio, you know you, what you get with them. They both looked really good. You know, and this started right away. There was, like, really no feeling out process. So this started out right from the beginning, just a great, great match. 
And uh, thanks for watching. I will see you guys later. Uh, 7.75 overall. Uh, pick up the DVD if you want. It, it is kind of skippable a little bit, but, you know, it still has a lot of great stuff on it. So, all right, I will see you guys later.